Tomodachi, welcome back to the channel with your host Nicholas Pettis. This is the Tokyo Show. We're doing fight talks. Yay! So, um, you guys, uh, I posted a video recently. You probably checked it out. It's the old one where it's all in Japanese. Uh, I just wanted to get that uploaded there because someone else had like 50,000 views on it. So, today's fight talks is going to be completely in English because that other video is done all in Japanese. So, if you speak Japanese, you can just watch the Japanese version of it. Um, I'm just gonna try and go one cut here and see how it goes. So it starts off with me training at Hombu Dojo um, When I was this is when I was 22 years old back in the day And this is the basement of Hombu Dojo and this sandbag is a new one actually when I first got there They had this one bag hanging there. that had this big gaping wound in it. It was really bizarre, but really cool um, I like to work on angles when I'm uh, working on the bag like using different techniques and trying to like get the bags movements to help me um, Hit it harder and more accurate uh, mixing up uh, obviously between high and low and punches and everything So this is inside a home dojo right there. That is Somebody old friends. He's from South Africa. Uh, Jason his name is we used to call him the punk by the way He stayed in training with me for about six months. Yeah, still good friends um, and so this is me actually running the Uchideshi class so when Sosai was uh, nearing the end, he would uh, call me up to the office and tell me what to do. And then I'd go down and teach the, the class for him. Um, and then he'd come down at the end of it and talk to us. So this is, an, uh, actually, this is after Sosai passed away, to be honest. But this is pretty much what was going on back in those days. Um, I was about 96 kilos here, I think, 96. And then actually getting in shape for real fights, uh, I would fight at about 95 or 94, I think it was. Yeah. So the Uchideshi class compared to any other class at Hombu was very different in that it had uh, only an hour and a half and so we would just warm up by doing um, mawashigiris, uh, 50 mawashigiris and 50 punches basically and then everything else is ido geiko and then kata. So there was no kumite, generally speaking there was no kumite in the Uchideshi class. Uh, although actually we did some sparring here, but it was because they were filming me and pre in preparation for the sixth world open championships um, I just won the European heavy champion heavyweight championships that year. And so uh, I was kind of on a roll <laughs> Yeah, this is a funny scene where I, I kind of sound like so there when I'm speaking in Japanese It's kind of funny because my Japanese is not very good there and uh, I was saying a lot of the things that so used to tell us as Uchideshi's and uh, saying something like, you know, you should train until you fall and pass out because if you don't give everything, then you're not going to gain everything. Um, and he says, and I think it's cool that you can actually give everything that you have here. Yeah. And so he said, yeah, so I'm telling here that so say, that's what he used to tell us, that we should try for everything. Yariba dekiru. Yaranai So it's like, if you do, if you try, you can do it. If you don't try, you'll never, you'll never know. So, uh, yeah, I kind of give your best here. So this is actually out in Erogawa. So this is close to where I used to live. And I get this funny expression on my face here because they asked me about Francisco Filio. And he was the only guy I didn't want them to ask me about. I mean, of course they're going to ask me about Francisco Filio. How could they not? Um, and so my whole point here was that being the European heavyweight champion and also Sosa Zuchideshi, for me, it was, I took great pride in um, proving to people that Sosa Zuchideshi could also be strong. So they made this little interview with me here and then they asked me about Francisco Filo and what I thought about him. And I said, I would be proud if I could beat him because then I could prove that Sosa Uchideshi was strong. So this guy, I kind of remember him vaguely. I keep dropping him with the same kick because the timing is <laughs> really so easy to get in on him. Oh, poor kid, poor kid, that's all I can say. Um, yeah, so that kind of barring here is like not tournament fighting. That's just like moving and like just taking advantage of being superior in time, timing and technique and stuff like that. And so here we are, the fight start. My first fight in this tournament that I have footage of here is uh, against Ben Siduaba from South Africa. Now Ben Siduaba had the pleasure of fighting Rodney, uh, who also stayed with me uh, as a new chief for about six months, I know. Uh, also still really good friends with uh, Rodney today. We talk very often actually. Um, so Ben Siduaba, I knew he was the heavyweight champion of South Africa and I knew to expect him to be strong because I'd heard from Rodney. And so I literally did something which is kind of insane here. I actually went in there full power from the moment go because I just knew that if I had to just, I just had to stay on top of this guy, like not give him an inch at all and just go for it. And so um, we were very fit back in those days. Um, and so this was actually not a problem. I had no fear of gassing out at all. I knew that I'd be fit enough and strong enough to go all the way through these guys. Um, and he turned out to be really powerful actually. Uh, but I kind of very early on, like that first contact initiated that I got in and got the better of him. And um, although it was a really tough fight, I kind of went out of there with no injuries. So that's kind of cool.
Yeah. And so I know that uh, he's very athletic and he's very strong and that he's got these amazing flying kicks. Um, and it's not like you can train against flying kicks. Um, they just come and you got to either <laughs> pull your head away from them or learn how to block them somehow. Um, very dangerous, very dangerous moves there. Uh, but I just think that all the um, experience from training and sparring and seeing things that when you see other people move, that you can... Uh, you can literally like, you know, gaze upon it and like feel where he is and where he's going to come and stuff like that. So um, I just think it was a, a big combination of, of all that uh, many years of training that always just culminated into being able to um, kind of defend for myself good like that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough fight. And, and, you know, to be honest, I'm not really sure if I was that convincing in beating him. But um, yeah, I just I know that I got him with a lot of clean hits and a lot of clean punches and stuff like that. So slightly there, he showed a little bit of injury, uh, a little bit of pain there, and he starts moving away from me. And I think that's kind of what a, one of the main defecting, uh, deciding factors for me winning this fight is something around there. Uh, I'm just going to let the, uh, the fight play out. Uh, if anyone ever has any questions about you know fighting or anything like that or what was going on through my head, um, then uh, please leave comments below and I can uh, try and get to it like that at any time. Uh, fight talks when i just do fight talks i'm really enjoying those things uh i love that you guys have a lot of questions and they rip up these uh, old stories from and memories from my past yeah so it's the end of the first round that must have hurt by the way that kick there it, that one hurts for sure so I've had the pleasure of going back and looking at all these old fights because I'm, you know, been YouTubing about it and stuff like that. But what I didn't realize as much as it was more of a feeling on that one that was that my left low kick was incredibly good. <laughs> I say that and laugh at myself. It's like I I don't understand if you uh, I don't know if you guys understand what I feel and what my philosophy about fighting really is because for me it's a feeling. And so I normally don't really, I know, I'm normally never really made any like super strategies to go in there. Uh, not in karate anyway. Uh, I just knew that I had to be busy at the end of the round there and also make sure that I just keep hitting him with good combinations. Um, so yeah, I win that one pretty easily actually. Now this guy Labko Alexander, uh, he comes in and after I fight him, he... Um, he ends up becoming European heavyweight champion for like five, six years in a row, I think. Um, but at this time, he was just this up-and-coming guy that no one had heard of. You see, even those kicks are super dangerous. Like, because I know he's knocked out a lot of people with those kicks. Um, and he was just flexible, and he was strong, and he was like resilient, you know. But the only thing that, see, stuff like that, that incredible timing of when I just slip away from it. And it's not something I've been practicing. It's just a feeling. Um, and so... Again, going back to the left low kick, right? I'm not really planning out that I want to keep him that much on the left low kick, but I preferred kicking on the left low kick because it was a better feeling. And normally that's a bit weird because um, the left low kick uh, for someone who's fighting, uh, fighting someone orthodox style is that it's further away, so, so it should be harder to, um, to attach to, to a foot there. Um, but for me, it just came natural, yeah, completely natural. I love kicking on the left low kick. Eventually, I'd end up doing like double low kicks and stuff like that that would uh, that would use in kickboxing. But at this time, it's just more like combinations. Um, and as you can see, I, think, I mean, I'm really hurting him here on the leg. And now, obviously, uh, during the fight, you know, the feeling is that I, I know that I'm hurting him and connecting him on that leg. So then, you know, I kind of just go for that leg. And so this fight is over now. Thank you very much. He was really strong, though. Dangerous, dangerous fighter. Yeah, but I ended up getting in with the low kick, so. I was so young. <laughs> uh, I was so young. But yeah, I mean, the pace of the fight again. So, I mean, when you think about it, I already had him. There's no point in me, like, going in and attacking him too much there at that point. I could have just, like, you know, rolled out the time and still won the fight. But that's not the way I fight. I fight to win. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, ouch, ouch. I was at the ne? Yeah, that was a good one. And now we're going to go up and I'm going to fight a Japanese fighter called Takaku. So he comes out of Josai Shibu, um, Hiroshige Shihan's students. And uh, so they have all this, like all of them, Kazumi and all of them are trained to fight and stand in a specific way in the, and 
I don't know why, but I feel that it's, it's very favorable for me the way that they move. Um, I've said this about Kazumi before, and I've said it about this guy here because he's part of that stable. Uh, and the way they fight just like gives me a chance to really shine on him. Now, he comes out strong, by the way. He comes out really strong. Um, and honestly, I mean, it, it could have been worse, except I just hit and kicked a little bit harder than him. And uh, the outcome of that is what you'll see now in this fight. So you see how he's like kind of crouched in and trying to get really close to me, right? And then just like chase me down and like cut me off and stuff like that. And so this is the style they do. They're a little bit heavier on their legs. And that means that he doesn't kick very hard, but that his punches are very effective because he stands good like that. And you can see that literally I'm just, I'm just physically stronger than him. He definitely gives everything he has, that's for sure. I'll give that to him. And so another thing, yeah, in these uh, tournaments, what we got to, what I used to be uh, really, really cautious and careful of is never to try and grab them at all because the judges or, or referees are always looking to give some excuse to give you like a minus point, like a Hansa Guaza. But so everything was combinations, punches and kicks. I slightly chipped him on the chin there. Sorry, sir. Didn't mean to do that. But it happens in the heated moment sometimes. He's not injured at all. This is nothing. Uh huh. It's actually a kind of strange phenomenon because fighters that do that, and I've done it myself, and it's just like, why? We, we, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a soccer match where you need to take a big break. Like if, if it doesn't hurt, just get on with it, kind of thing. I don't know why those those things happened back then. I don't know if it happens today when people do that. Um, but for me, think, see, see, that was also him kicking me, and and he literally like kicked himself so hard that he, I think he almost broke his foot, or he might have broken it actually. Again, still, like, you know, I'm winning, but why would I let it get away with it? No, it's like, get the fight over with. Fight to win. Fight to win for sure. <laughs> he really gave everything he had there. Good on him. That's actually a really good knee kick there, actually. Kind of scary. But you see, the pressure and the strength of my punches and kicks were just too much for him. I trained really hard back then. I was actually really strong. That was really cool. <laughs> it's fun to go back and watch these things. And look at the calmness in my face. <laughs> it's almost like looking some, at someone else. Damn. Those were fun days. I used to love karate. I used to love fighting anyway, that's for sure. Oh, see? And so when, this is what I was talking about. So when you see, I'm like take, trying to take a break there, but for me, there's a point in taking a break because the more time I, I lose while, while I'm recovering, the less time there is to fight him. And then that's, you know, less uh, chance of uh, getting an injury. But when you think about it, it's, it's useless because if I just go in there and keep pushing on, pushing on him, then he, see, he almost got a Wazari there. And I could have been Ipun um, Gach or could just let him fight there. So I was a bit cocky there, unfortunately. Yeah. I was in a, state where I knew that I was good and that really went to my head <laughs> uh, my girlfriend calls me the uh, that those are the days when I was a douche <laughs> yeah yeah I was definitely a douche <laughs> so uh, yeah so it's this this is the same fight actually it's just another angle but so they cut it here and it's so he drops and then he goes out and he gets to greet his uh, sensei Hiroshi Kishan at the back there and that's Kamoto right there in the back <laughs> yeah crazy he became world champion twice later on so this is my last fight in this tournament unfortunately this is in the best eight uh, against Francisco Filio now something really happens here that really annoys me and this is why he is so good by the way oh he was strong by the way man everything he did just hurt so unfortunately, I didn't really have a plan here. He'd had a plan, kind of, to try and keep me away from him because he had seen me fight in the European Heavyweight Champions and had seen where, where I knocked everyone out. So he knew that he didn't want me to get close to him. And so he's doing these kicks. And then so one thing happens right now. I think it's the next kick that comes up. And this is not supposed to happen, but his reach in his legs is just nuts. He literally slaps me in the face with his toes. This one, here it comes, here it comes. And it doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look like anything on the video, but I guarantee you, it felt like that. Oh, look at my face. I'm completely red from it. Oh, so embarrassing. Man, and after that, so it doesn't really matter. You know, you're down a point. You just got to see what you can do. And, you know, 
and, and then the fight actually gets a lot better. So if I'd just gone in with that attitude after having like the same attitude uh, that I have now in the fight that I had be, like before I got kicked in the head, um, it would have been a much better fight. But the fact is that he's so strong and that um, when you get close to him, everything he does hurts so much, like the punches or even the kick, and the kicks are scary. The kicks are scary because I didn't know how to defend against him at that time. Um, plus, he had four years previously knocked out Andy Hook, which was my idol, and I'd seen him. I'd been at Uchideshi four years previous to this. So it's like fighting against someone that you've been, you know, looking up to for like last four years and stuff like that. Um, we became really, really good friends after this tournament. We trained and, 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 and fought in the K1 together and stuff like that. And um, he's like an older brother, always being like that, you know, guy. So I'm not embarrassed losing to him. You know, it's like, you know, he becomes world champion. So, of course, you know, if you win, if you lose to the, the best in the tournament, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, I would have liked to have fought him in the final. I mean, if I had the choice, but, you know, I didn't get that choice, unfortunately. But that's just the luck of the draw, you know. If, it had, if he'd, he had been in a different block, or I'd have been in a different block, I could have maybe fought him in the final if I'd gotten all the way up. You never know. I mean, these things you really never know. It could have been interesting, actually, if I hadn't gotten kicked in the face, what would have happened? See that kick? <laughs> oh, man, and look at the power in him, you know. This is like what I was doing to Takaku, you know, like having the strength to physically, you know, punch someone out of the ring. That's pretty amazing. Uh, he's heavier than me also there, and he's also taller, which makes um, for a good position in a karate fight, actually. Yeah. Uh, I was always a little bit jealous of his 186 centimeters, actually. Those extra six centimeters would have been amazing to have had in the K1. Ooh, ouch. So you see, this is again, so I'm like kind of playing on this. It's not really that painful. I don't really need that much time to take recovery. What I need is I need time to fight back so I can get the point that he took back. But it never happens, unfortunately. I'm, uh, I'm not disappointed with myself in this fight. It is what it is. Um, and I learned a lot from it, unfortunately. I, if I had, like I said, if I had known I could have just gone for it harder <laughs> and probably gotten a better fight out of it, I would have done that. And so, obviously, I lose here. He's ahead of point, so that's fair enough. He becomes uh, the first uh, foreign world champion in Kyokushin ever, which is an amazing uh, feature to do. Um, so, I get this little interview here after, and uh, I'll try and translate what it is that I'm saying. Yeah, brother, thank you for that. Arigatouzaimasu. There's Mass and my, my sensei, Boots, Boots from, from Denmark, actually, the, my, one of my senpais. And so I was looking at Francisco's other fights and it didn't look like he was going to be as strong as he was when he fought me. And it felt like he had really just woken up this tiger when I got in there. I couldn't move properly. I couldn't do what I wanted to do is what I'm saying. And then I go, this is a good thing. He says, oh, here's this. It's because of the power, I said. And he says, have you ever been pushed that much back before? And I said, no, how'd you make that? That's the first time. And then I go, this is good. Because next time I'll win. <laughs> well, that never I really came to the test because I never got to fight him again. But um, I trained with him a lot, like I said, uh, nothing but respect for the gentleman. And I just really um, I hope that he's doing good. Uh, he's in Brazil running his dojo, as, as far as I know. Um, I have not seen what he's doing on social media or anything, but um, I know that he's he's always been like a like a mentor to me. He was always like really like he paved the way for us to get into the K1, which I'm forever grateful for. Um, anyway, this was Fight Talks, you know, the English version of that sixth world tournament uh, with that I posted the other day, and I thought that I would do some commentary on the different fights. I hope you enjoyed what you liked, and I see. I know. I hope you like what you see and see what you like. Uh, if you do, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and set that reminder this was the the the, the fight talks with the tokyo show